Thank you for your question. Remember, Daniel is written in two primary languages, Hebrew and Aramaic, and some Greek words. This is from the Aramaic portion of Daniel, and it's quite complicated in the original language. I have to get my wife, who's actually a mathematician, but she has a degree in biblical and Semitic languages, to, to help me, because uh, my Aramaic is not as good as hers is. In any event, this is what I can tell you. First of all, in the Aramaic text, the verses don't correspond to the English text. They vary by three, four verses. So it's not the same, it's not 413 in the original text. But if I were to put it back into the English, verse 13 and verse 17 have to be interpreted in light of each other. These angels are called Erin, Erin. Now Aramaic is similar to Hebrew. It's related to the Hebrew infinitive, lehitorer, to awake or to awaken. These angels are not just awoken, but alert. Their character is to be alert. They do not fit the, the description of the kruvim, that is the cherubim found in other passages such as Isaiah, etc. They're not cherubs, not described that way. Their character is, they're alert angelic beings. And they issue a pitkama, which is a difficult word to translate because it has several meanings, one of which in Aramaic is a commandment. But what they appear to be alert about is they're watching over the commandment to be carried out or to be fulfilled. So they're watching what was going to happen to the king of Babylon and even watching for the restoration of Nebuchadnezzar. When God issues this kind of command, a pit kama, there's angels watching to see that it happens. That's the implication of the verse, and that is the meaning. They are watching to see it happen, or as it were, they're alert to make sure it happens. Their character is again Erin, Erin and Aramaic, not Hebrew. Uh, but they're also referred to in verse 17 as Kedishin, Kedishin, which is similar to the Hebrew Kodeshim. They're the holy ones. Holy in the sense they're set apart by God for that function. They're set apart by God for that function, to be alert, to make sure it happens. There is an indirect reference to this passage found in the book of Amos. What do you see, Amos? I'm watching over my word to perform it. Well, these angels are, in a sense, divine surrogates who watch over what God has decreed to make certain it is performed as God has decreed it. That is the nature and meaning of these angelic beings, the Erin. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Blessings to your friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed in the faithful church. The rapture will not happen 
will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Parpezzo, Parpezzo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.